Well, today we're going to find out if I can hold tight tolerances on really big parts which I bloody hope I can, because these things are expensive. G'day guys, Matt from HAL Heavy Duty. We're an Aussie machine shop that specializes in the drilling industry, and today we are re machining up some replacement huge bronze bearings to go into a water swivel that we had uh, pulled apart last week. So in the previous video, we had managed to get these out of it, and we've remachined up the, the internal diameter where these have got to get pressed into. So today, we're just going to be working with the bronze. So let's get cracking. All right, it's the start of another beautiful day. <laughs> so, to make sure that we get the actual right internal size here, three measurements with the internal stick micrometer, so one, two, three, in three different spots. You'd think it'd be exactly the same, that might be an outlier, but the average of there and both of these turned out the same. Our original measurement was 317.04, but once it cooled, just ever so slightly, it shrunk by about 0.1, which was to be expected. So our actual finished average size is 316.96, and we will be machining the bronze for an interference fit 317.03. And this is our phosphor bronze we're gonna be working with here. The length is one mil over, which is great. Got a little bit of wiggle room there. We're at 123.3, so we've got a little bit to take off so I can get it to size, and I've gotta be exact on this, on both of them, right? The reason we're choosing phosphor bronze, see LG2 or leaded gun metal, it's good for light loads, low to medium speeds, right? It's just not very hard. So the, the Brunel hardness is 60, whereas on the PB1 phosphor bronze that we are going to use, 100 to 150 in its hardness, it's just, it's got good machining properties, high strength, good for corrosion resistance, but it's good for bearings with your, your high loads is the main thing. We could use aluminium bronze, AB2, but this is better sometimes when uh, the, there's not as much lubrication. Sometimes it just happens. So we're gonna do the PB1 bronze. Um, sort of a toss up between the two, but this one out. To get this job done, we're going to use the Colchester Alpha 1760. We've fully cleaned out the lathe because I want to save this uh, excess bronze and I'll show you what for at the end. We recycle all of the metals from here, but this stuff gets put to a really fun use. So uh, we've cleaned it out so that it doesn't get con contaminated so that I can save as much as possible for really, <laughs> it's cute. And all I'm doing now is turning out the OD and putting in the grease run because we'll press them in and then do the inside. Willie's given that mill hell. <laughs> um, we turn down the outside, put the grease groove in, and then once it's pressed in, we'll do the inside. So. So the first step is, I'm going to face it with the little W tool, which is our tool one, face it to 106 mil, so we're at size. Then we're going to use our tool five here, which is a, a D style tool to take it down to size. We're going to take a cut, re-measure, we're going to be a tiny little feather cut, re-measure, and then we'll adjust our Z to the final pass. So we'll call it 
take it down to zero then, we're at our 106. Three twenty two point eight eight five. Right. We'll take another cut now and remeasure. We'll go for three twenty on the dot. See how close we cut. I've let it cool down slightly. I don't machine bronze with coolant, it just makes a terrible mess, terrible mess, and then it gets stuck in the coolant tank and I've got issues. So I've got to just let it cool in between passes when I'm checking and between the final pass, but it's fine. We'll see what that measures up at now. It should be 320. Lovely. All right, let's get this machined. Right, you can see based on the one that I pulled out from before. So there's a, a grease run, 45 mil. Right, it's not actually in the center of this new one because we've made it longer, but it's gonna be 45 from the end. Let's put that in there now.
Beautiful. All right, so now we'll flip him over and get rid of that by putting a little tiny lead on there so it locates easier when we go to press this in. Job done. Check the measurement of the whole thing now that it's cooled down again. And that is done. Make the other one and then we'll press them in. Now that those are machined up beautifully, we'll cool them down and we'll head off to the press just to make the fit a little easier. Let's do it. Just got a disc that I had machined up from the last time. Just so they've got a nice surface to push on. Let's do it. Well, I'm really happy with how that came together. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> In the next video, we're going to be machining up the spindle, which has just returned from case hardening in the CNC using ceramics and I'm going to be using this big fella here we call the Hydra to machine out all of the bronze and put in the internal groove work that is going to be a very fun video so if you're new to the channel and newly subscribed let me know in the comments where you tuned in from I really look forward to the comments guys I it is one of the highlights of my week usually on a Friday afternoon over a frosty beverage I sit there and I just love chatting back and forward to everybody and I'm just I'm grateful, very grateful, that there's so many people out there that share my interest in something that I love doing. Like, I really look forward to doing the work that I do, but I, I get a kick out of being able to just share a little window into the world of our real live Aussie machine shop each week with you guys. All across the world, I think we're in 100 countries now, which is, <laughs> it's just, it's very humbling and kind of exciting because um, I think more people out there, if they knew that, you know, these kind of trades existed, particularly young people, um, they might want to pursue them. So I just, that, oh, my only goal is that, you know, we all get to sit here and enjoy some nice stuff being made in, in manual and CNC machines, but also that younger people realize, geez, there's some cool trades out there that are a bit of fun. Anyway, guys, I did promise you as well, I'd show you what that bronze was used for. So let's go and have a look at that now. It's kind of cute. Anyway, I will catch you in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one. Lucky smog doesn't come in here and take us all out.
Christmas. So it's Teddy Bear's birthday, and Uncle Justin, the forger, has been working hard for Teddy. What do you got in there, mate? Let's have a look. Uncle Justin's made something for you. Open it up. Whoa! It's real. We're coins. It's real. <gasps> Big coins. Big coins for Teddy. <laughs> You're rich, Teddy. We can retire. Can <gasps> My goodness. Oh, with numbers on them. One. Thank you, Uncle Justin, for Eight. taking all of the scrap metal and making Teddy a coin set. How good is that? Nothing goes to waste. <laughs> <laughs> good job, bro. Good job. What do you think, Ted? Uh, it's good? Say thank you, Uncle Justin. Thank you, Uncle Justin. Good boy, buddy. <laughs> good boy. I would have killed to have these as a kid. <laughs> I think Daddy's gonna steal your treasure, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. All right. Feel like I'm in a John Wick movie. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome, mate.